Well, good morning. This is Tuesday, May the 11th, 2021. You have six more days to get your taxes in if you have not submitted them yet. We continue our series on time, learning the right time to act from the book of Ecclesiastes, in particular, chapter 3, verses 3 through Eight, And so this morning we come to this phrase, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Now that might seem similar to the first phrase in verse four, a time to weep and a time to laugh that we discussed yesterday. However, investigation into the scriptures with my limited knowledge uh, I want to pre uh, present to you a, uh, not a different slant, but a enhanced slant, if you please. Time to mourn. Uh, the Hebrew word means uh, to wail, to lament. And its primary use is before a briar or during the death of a loved one. Not necessarily that we talked about yesterday about weeping over our sin or about uh, sinful situations in our world and our culture. This word is specifically uh, related to death and to dying. Uh, the modern day Jewish funeral today, um, they want their loved ones to be buried within one day of the death. And that becomes, after the person is buried, that becomes a, uh, that starts the, the, the period of seven days called the Shiva, S-H-I-V-A. Now, the Shiva is seven days where the family, the direct uh, descendants of the person who has passed remain at home and other friends and families or what they call mourners will come to the house and to spend time with them, to pray with them, to comfort them, to provide solace for them. And it is a uh, specific time for mourning. Uh, it is an orderly time that takes place. It's not full of emotional chaos, even though they're, the Jewish people are emotive by nature. We think of Luke chapter 7, verse 11 through 17, about the story of the widow of Nain and the funeral procession that they were involved with. She was involved with her son had died. Evidently, her husband had died prior to that, and her son was her only child, and so she is now a widow indeed, and there is great mourning. There were people walking along the briar, or if you please, the casket, and a great public but orderly display of the intense sorrow and grief this mother was experiencing over, in, over the loss of her son. And Jesus is entering into the city of Nain. And that is where he stopped the funeral procession, uh, touched the uh, coffin, if you please, and raised the boy and restored uh, her son back to him for a time until he uh, did pass away. That's not recorded, but Everybody that Jesus raised from the dead had to die sooner or later and didn't come back to life except the Lord. So there was a time to mourn. Uh, there was a time to uh, uh, grieve over the loss of a human companion. It was an orderly, uh, systematic uh, procedure that took place. Again, not void of emotions, but not driven by emotions. 
Now, the opposite of that is there's a time to dance. There's a time to dance. And the Hebrew word carries the idea of to skip about. You know, when kids are happy, they can skip about, can't they? They can jump around and wiggle and jiggle. And and some of us old timers look at that and say, boy, boy, if I tried that, my back would be out for six months. Uh, means to run and leap. And we should think of David, who danced before the Lord vigorously, enthusiastically, under control in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. David danced before the Lord because the Ark of the Covenant was being returned to Jerusalem. It was a time of worship and david was excited to express in his own personality even as king to dance before the lord to leap about and perhaps he was trying to set the example for other people of his kingdom to get excited and rejoice as well for the return of the ark, uh, the symbol of the presence of God. So there's a time to mourn, a time to express our sorrow, uh, to let God know and others know about the deep loss that we have experienced. And there are times to recognize the presence of the Lord in a special way. In our culture today, whether we dance or not, that would probably be frowned upon in most conservative churches. It's very well accepted in the charismatic and Pentecostal movements. It's the, it's the heart that is important because God has designed us and commanded us to worship with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that is the opportunity for us to uh, worship the Lord through the personality that he has given to us and the freedom that he grants to us. Tomorrow we'll take a look at a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. Think about that. When in the Bible did they throw stones? And when did they gather stones? Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow.